Hello friends, in the previous two videos we have discussed one solid state laser that is ruby laser and one gas laser that is helium neon laser. In this session we shall talk about semiconductor laser. After watching this video students will be able to illustrate construction and working of semiconductor laser and state merits and demerits of semiconductor laser. So first we shall see what is the construction of semiconductor laser. What is semiconductor laser? It is heavily doped PN junction with forward bias. Okay. It is heavy. You, I hope you know the PN junction. I hope you know the PN junction. Hmm? P type semiconductor it is joined to n type semiconductor we get the pn junction this is the pn junction it is heavily doped heavily doped means doping concentration is very high and it is forward bias okay it is heavily doped pn junction with forward bias okay this is the semiconductor laser see this i will change the color i will use red color so that you can i can highlight okay see this is the junction this is p type semiconductor this is n type so you can see this is the junction now you see here this junction is in horizontal plane this is the top surface this is the bottom surface this top surface and bottom surface they are metallized to give ohmic contact they are metallized to give ohmic contact means using this contact we can connect it in the external circuit this is the front side this is the back side they are polished parallel to each other and perpendicular to junction Okay. And this, this is the remaining phase. It is kept rough because we don't want any emission in this region. Hmm? This is the construction. Hmm? I will repeat. This is the junction in horizontal plane. Top and bottom surface metallized to give ohmic contact. Front and back faces are polished. And these remaining two faces are rough. And this junction, you can see this laser, it comes out through this junction region. So we call it as active region. We call it as active region. Now this semiconductor laser, its size is very small. It is less than 1 millimeter. Okay. But before that, I want to ask you one question. What are the types of biasing? Now we know PN junction is biased either by forward or reverse bias. And what is forward bias? If P type semiconductor is connected to positive terminal of battery and N type is connected to negative terminal of battery, it is called as forward bias. Okay. And in semiconductor laser, we use forward bias. Okay. Now, the sides are of the order of 0.1 millimeter and the thickness of the active layer is only 1 micrometer. Hmm? Thickness of this active layer is only 1 micrometer. Okay. Hmm? Now, energy level diagram for P and N. Okay. Uh, in brief, I will discuss. This is the N type semiconductor. This is the conduction band. Hmm? This is the valence band. And this is the Fermi level. This is for N type. Hmm? And this is for P type. This is conduction. This is valence band. And this is Fermi level. Huh? You can see Fermi level is near valence band. It is near conduction band. So, when the junction is formed, means when this N and P we join together. Now, we know that when junction is formed, electrons from N cross the junction and N 
enter n region and holes from p hmm? holes from p they come to n region these electrons they go to p region enter the p region and holes enter n region and due to this this energy levels on n side rises see this fermi level also rises conduction band also rises this also rises and due to these holes these drops conduction band fermi level and valence band they drop down okay now see this fermi level drop down and this fermi level rises and therefore at one point they come in the same plane they become equal and when they become equal we say that junction is formed okay we say that junction is formed hmm? now we are using heavily doped hmm? i will show you now energy level diagram hmm? see this is the energy level diagram huh? you can see here fermi level is equal on both the sides see this is the fermi level on n side and this is the fermi level on p side we are using heavily doped so in heavily doped in n region fermi level is in conduction band and on p side it is in valence band okay and it is equal on both the sides huh? this is the energy level diagram without bias and here see you can see this is the energy level diagram when forward bias is applied hmm? now what is the effect of forward bias hmm? now we know when we apply the forward bias majority carriers can easily cross the junction hmm? so you can see here electrons from n cross the junction and enter here and holes enter here now we know hole is nothing but the in occupancy of electron or unfilled energy level okay it is absence of electron okay so we can say that here the number of electrons and here the number of holes are same does it mean and see this is the higher energy level does it mean number of electrons in higher energy state is greater than lower energy state and what we call it we call population inversion okay we call it population inversion see here i will repeat on n side fermi level is in conduction band p side fermi level lies in valence band and it is equal on both the sides in thermal equilibrium now we apply the forward bias so electrons from n and holes from p cross the junction and enter the junction layer region or we call it as active region they enter active region this is the active region so number of electrons in upper level is greater than number of holes in lower level and that is the population inversion okay so if suitable photon Hmm? see this is the suitable photon incident on the system it starts a stimulated emission once a started process continues hmm? and we get laser okay hmm? so this is the working now characteristic wavelength is different for different types of semiconductors if we use gallium arsenic alloy if we use gallium arsenic it is a semiconducting alloy if we use this the characteristic wavelength is 9000 angstrom unit now remember in semiconductor there are no energy levels hmm? but there are bands we know this is the energy level and this is the band this is the band and we know band has the range of energy and hence in semiconductor laser the range of wavelength we get we do not get only one wavelength but we get a range of wavelength okay so this is the working of semiconductor laser now what are the merits it is small in size lightweight hmm? 
longer life and low power consumption and hence it has high efficiency it is very easy to operate and very less energy consumption but it is the semiconductor therefore it requires constant current supply and we require to maintain the temperature constant it has low output power because uh, energy given or light energy emitted uh, is very less intense limited coherence and beam quality because it is the band structure not the single energy level and it is sensitive to temperature okay so in this video we talk about semiconductor laser we have discussed construction and working of semiconductor laser merits and demerits of semiconductor laser so we have in these three videos we have studied two solid state lasers one is ruby laser uh, we have discussed two solid state lasers one is ruby laser another is semiconductor laser and another we have studied this is gas laser this is helium neon laser so we have discussed these three types of lasers okay so we stop here thank you